This is Dick Whitney from the Optical Heritage Museum in January of 2012, and I'm presenting uh, an improved version of what I posted online on YouTube, but it's a slideshow of the 1955 flood with audio presented by Bob Haynes, who recorded this in 1955 August. I hope you enjoy it and sit back and uh, watch what happened to Southbridge in 55. And the people of Southbridge are urged that this is an emergency purpose. This is an emergency purpose. The, uh, the bridge at the Western Main Street is over, the water is pouring over the wall on West Street. All people on, the, on that area are urged to go to the high points of the town, the Globe section. People living in the Globe section from River to Lower Pleasant Street, Walcott and Plimpton Street are asked to go up at Pleasant Street or Fifth Street. Those are the only streets that are passable in that area. On the Main Street side of River Street, up of Pleasant Street. Go towards Sturbridge. Go up Pleasant Street towards Sturbridge. If you happen to live in the area in back of Ames Worcester Street, your best bet is to go up through Pine Street. These uh, bulletins come from Chief of Police Ovi DeRosier, and uh, they are coming in, as far as he knows, the roads that are, pa are passable. And if anyone living in the Mechanic Street area who is stranded now, if you can possibly make it up to uh, Charlton Street, to up towards Page Hill. And if you live on the uh, AO side down by North Street, you're reminded that the rotary on East Main Street is completely underwater. So that's not possible possible there at all. And uh, the only best bet for people in that area, says the chief, is to try to get to higher ground to get up on the second or third floor of your building. This uh, is an emergency purpose. Southbridge is in real trouble. Once again, uh, the blast you heard on the uh, fire alarm just a moment ago is an evacuation blast, a series of shot blasts issued by the chief of police, Ovi DeRoja, warning that this is an emergency uh, bulletin, evacuation bulletin. The uh, bridge on the corner of West and Main Street, the water is pouring out of the wall. We don't know how long the bridge will last down in that area. Bob, anything? No, we do have a family. Uh, we do have a family on Charlton Street in Sturbridge. Uh, that are maroon and there are three small children and uh, they would like some help getting out there uh, out of there however uh, the police department is taking care of it just as quickly as they can and they are in no immediate danger wherever you are just be calm uh, even though it may appear a bit frightening be calm take it easy and and uh, I'm certain we'll have help to you when I say we I'm speaking about the police department the fire department civil defense workers Red Cross officials and everyone everyone involved so just don't get excited, uh, as difficult as it may appear to be so. Those of you, please don't get out and sightsee, because in so doing, you will be hindering rescue operations. So please stay in your homes. If we need your help, we'll get in touch with you. Okay, Bob, but just repeating that, uh, of course, there are no business or retail operations in town in Southbridge today. That is a definite uh, a must. There's no question about it. That comes from the chief of police. All business and retail operations have been canceled in Southbridge today. Sightseeing is hindering uh, the rescue operation. It's extremely important to the police, fire, and civil defense that you do not go out walking or driving. Please stay indoors. One other point. Uh, we made this announcement earlier, and I think perhaps we've exhausted the supply, but if there is anyone that has a boat that is within the area, uh, your boat can be used you please uh, take make your way to the Foley to Foley's News on Main Street. If you have a boat on a trailer that can be moved, that boat can be used. The police department will direct you direct you to where it should be used. If you adjust tall, or uh, rather, get it to the uh, to Main Street in front of Foley's News, they'll direct you to the place where the boat is needed the most. Okay, Bob. But now let's uh, slowly repeat these. Uh, uh, bulletins that we received from Chief DeRoger about uh, the different sections of town for evacuation purposes. As you know, the sh series of shot blasts that you heard on the fire alarm system just a shot moment ago means that it's an evacuation period. And the water is pouring over the bridge down by West Street there. All the uh, people of that area are urged to go to the high points of town. If you live in the Globe section around River Street, Lower Pleasant Street, Walcott or Plimpton Street, you should go up Pleasant uh, or Fisk I, I Street. Those are the uh, two streets in that area that seem to be passable at the present time. On Main Street, this side of uh, the side of River Street, you should go up Pleasant Street towards Sturbridge if you're planning to evacuate. Up Pleasant Street towards Sturbridge. And uh, these bulletins are coming in. The police department cruising cars are checking all these points, checking the roads that are passable. Of course, uh, there is water on all the streets in town, but uh, some roads can. Uh, become passable for emergency purposes. If uh, you're in back of Ames, Worcester, 
uh, go up towards Pine Street, Pine Street, along yeah, okay. the area near no, no. Ames Worcester. Yeah. Okay. Mechanic Street, uh, that area is pretty uh, well uh, washed out down there. If you can make it up through uh, Charlton Street, up towards Page Hill, and uh, down around North Street, uh, the rotary, down along there, the rotary on East Main Street is completely underwater. All right, just a moment. Uh, uh, we have a report that uh, the uh, Denison Street area is high and dry, and uh, folks can head up there. Uh, we do suggest, however, that you uh, proceed to, to the evacuation centers, centers that have been set up. Uh, we have no report as to how long the rain is going to continue, and should it continue throughout the day, you would best be in a location where we can take care of you, both insofar as food and, and shelter is concerned. So that uh, we advise that you not uh, go out and sit in your cars and wait for the thing to get over. Latest weather forecast says that uh, this is going to last until noontime at least, and uh, probably a little bit longer, although the rain may not be as heavy. So we do advise you to go to the centers that have been set up. Uh, most public halls have been opened. Uh, the police department, the town hall, we understand is getting a little bit crowded. The YMCA is open. Redmond's Hall is open like new cleaners. VFW Hall, uh, WESO studios are open to you if you'd like. Uh, however, there are high areas, as uh, the lady who was just called has told us, and uh, that was once again, please. Denison Drive, Denison Lane, off West Street. Fine. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, bye-bye. Okay, Bob, now let's quickly uh, run down a list of the places that are open for people in this area to go to in the emergency uh, operations now underway. Like new cleaning is now open for the day for people in the, in the area down around Central Street. There's no work for the employees, but the establishment will be o open. And Louis Chapari uh, announces that uh, uh, there will be coffee and donuts served down there for anyone uh, coming down. He toward Webster eventually leads into the French River. All people in Oxford, so far as is known, have been evacuated. Anyone in the area wishing transportation, however, may call any of these numbers. Oxford 72050-72333 or 78613. Transportation is available at the town hall. You may get transportation by calling any of these numbers. Once again, we'll repeat them. Oxford 72050 Seven, this is in two, regard to the three, fact that the dam three, is out three, in Oxford. Seven, eight, six, one, three. Breakfast is being served at the town hall as well. Once again, we repeat, the dam at Texas Village on Route 20 in Oxford, or in the Oxford area, has gone out. The water is heading toward Webster. We will keep you posted as to the details. While we're calling back and forth between uh, civil defense posts in Worcester, Boston, Springfield, and Hartford, also news agencies and uh, other emergency organizations. So uh, please do not use your telephones any more than is absolutely necessary. It has burst. In Charlton, on, on Mill Pond, 20 families were evacuated. No one was injured. The minor dam burst on the Mill Pond in Charlton, 20 families evacuated. No one injured. Ruined and sinking shelter at the town hall or the police station may go there. All people urged to stay off the highways. Redman's Hall will be open at 9 o'clock this morning for emergency. Anyone wishing uh, to get out of Redman's Hall for emergency purposes can do so at 9 o'clock. Romanian Hall is now open. Coffee being served. VFW Hall is now open. The FOE Hall on Central Street is open. YMCA is open. The Notre Dame Hall is open. Cohassie Country Club open. The Red Cross the headquarters at Town Hall is open, and also the Baptist Church, as we uh, mentioned previously. And Police Chief Ovi DeRosiers announced that the flood emergency evacuation is now underway, and there is no business or retail operations in Southbridge today because of the severe flood conditions. Sightseeing is hindering the rescue operations. Please remain indoors keep off the street. Do not drive your car. Please do not walk around. Please stay in your home today. People who have motors of any kind in their cellars, please do not try to run them. You might stand a possibility of a short circuit. Wait until the motor dries out. Well, it's now 10 minutes of 10, and the rain is still continuing. It's still miserable out, and the water is getting higher and higher in the Quinnebog River. Annie and I just took a walk, and we walked down Wallace Road, 
down to Westville. Westville is underwater. Uh, there's probably four to five feet of water flowing over the bridge at Westville. Westwell's garage is underwater. We met Norman DeLage, and his car was in the garage. He's been working on it. He said he's he just bought $500 worth of hot rod parts that he put on the car, and they're now probably under about four feet of water. Uh, the houses down in Westville are uh, pretty well flooded all around them. We walked down River Road down to the second bridge, which is no longer there. The second bridge in Stirbridge has been washed out. So it's really quite a, quite a thing to see the water swirling down the Quinnebog. We've never seen anything like it. The, uh, the current is terrific. The water is uh, brown. It's a dirty brown color from the sand and gravel and dirt. There are logs or trees, pieces of trees, everything floating down the river. And there is uh, an odor, which I imagine is probably characteristic of uh, various things. It smells all a combination of sewerage and an earthy smell from the very, very wet ground. It's really quite an experience. As I say, it's now just before 10 o'clock, and the state of emergency is on in Southbridge. Uh, everything is fine here. The water is still swirling around our house, but of course that's rolling off Shepherd Hill down to the Quinnebog. So, that's the way things are at just a little bit before 10 o'clock. One of the amazing things about this whole thing has been the fact that we've kept our electrical power, at least up until now. Uh, I was just uh, listening to WESO, the radio station in Southbridge, and they've just gone off the air very suddenly, and I suspect they've lost their power. So, um, it may be any minute here, of course, when we lose ours, and then we'll have to finish this tape-recorded commentary and uh, pick up wherever we leave off. It is now about quarter of eleven, and the flash just came over WESO about five minutes ago that the West Street Dam has gone out and that, of course, the water, which was being held by back by the dam, is heading out over Globe Village area and the low-lying sections of Southbridge. Uh, and uh, there's a report on right now, someone who has just come back, and all back from Oxford. Oxford are just about flooded. There are several bridges in West Oxford and also in North Oxford that have been washed out and conditions as a whole in Oxford are very bad. There is no road passable going from Webster through to Worcester at the present time by way of Oxford. I have some information from John Bonnie Wyth at West Main Street from the upper West Main Street to down to Lavoie's. There are big washouts and big holes along the gutter, so please proceed with caution. And the Webster Water Department tell me that they're still pumping water, although the lake has gone up one foot since uh, the evening, but uh, there is no danger, and uh, you needn't boil the water in Webster. There's still no danger there. From the gas and electric people, they tell me that they're going, we should keep uh, posted with them. They're going to tell us how far the water is just beginning to rise on Lower Schofield Avenue. And uh, Chuck has some more information. Uh, continuing with uh, more news of Oxford, at the Oakside Furniture Store, where the conditions are especially bad, uh, we noticed three or four cars are now up to the roof with water, and they're completely submerged uh, in that particular section. And uh, there is a, a railing that has been covered by three feet of water. The railing itself is just about four feet high, and it has been covered with three feet of water uh, that we were told by the residents in that area. We have another report coming in, uh, in momentarily. Uh, in the meantime, we'd like to remind all Oxford uh, residents that the water, uh, that the Board of Health in Oxford has advised not to drink water unless it is boiled. You've heard that from our Southwood studios. We'd like to repeat it once again because we heard it uh, while we were in Oxford that the water is not drinkable uh, unless you do boil it. 
Conditions in Webster, right now at the Webster Lake, we switch over to Esther Costa. Well, I have an important announcement just handed to me. A Mrs. Mayotte from Webster is, is, wants to know more about her mother, who is an elderly lady and lives at 106 Chaldon Street. She's very concerned over, and she would like very much to have Mrs. Mayotte call her daughter here in Webster. Also, Penn Brown's call, and uh, if the station needs any uh, relief to uh, have Mr. Nims please call him. Another one is uh, the, uh, some people have called in for their relatives uh, in Southbridge, and we are telling them that there are no phones going into Southbridge and to relay their calls here. I think that's all we have here from Webster. John will be back with more information on the flood. Okay, Southbridge. From Webster, and uh, we will try to return to you at intervals uh, due to the lack of communications other than radio. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot communicate uh, directly with the Webster studio, so we're going to depend on our, on our air. Uh, I think it would be well if uh, approximately at each 15-minute interval we return to the Webster studios, and uh, it now being quarter of 11 at 11 o'clock, we'll come back to you again to see if you have anything to report. Um, once again, if your phones are in order and they are, are operating, the telephone company requests that you uh, use them sparingly only in cases of emergency. Uh, the telephone situation, of course, is exceedingly, exceedingly difficult at a period like this. WESO has not been able to call out. Uh, we request that Civil Defense, the Red Cross, the Police Department, and the Fire Department, and Fire Departments in all towns involved in Oxford and in uh, Webster, Dudley, Southbridge, uh, North Grosvenordale, and uh, the entire area, if you would please call us and give us any information that you would like relayed to the general public. Once again, for those of you down the, um, toward Putnam and uh, on the banks of the Quinnebog River, you can expect a rush of water because the dam, the West Street Dam, has let go in Southbridge. And of course, as they've told you already from Webster, the uh, dam at Texas Village uh, has uh, let go and uh, water is rush rushing toward Webster. And here is a note uh, for the evacuee centers. For the evacuee centers, if you would call uh, WESO, uh, Deary Brothers drivers are here and if you need milk and you will call here, we will, or they will, uh, get the milk to you. Now, there's been considerable damage all the way down the line, and we will give you that report just as soon as we, just as soon as we get it. Um, once again, we would like to repeat to you, uh, please do not cite safe. Uh, you are only hampering operations. Not only are you hampering operations, but you're liable to prosecution. A state of emergency exists in Southbridge, as declared by Police Chief DeRozier, and if you're on the road and on the highway and you are not authorized to be there, you are liable for prosecution, and according to police officials, that is just what will happen. It was just about two weeks ago that the rains first started, which brought the devastating flood to this section of New England. It's now August 31st, Wednesday evening, and we're sitting here in the peace and quiet of our bedroom. Uh, things are definitely calmed down as far as we're concerned and as far as Wallace Road is concerned. There's no water rushing down beside the window as there was uh, in the previously recorded part of, the, of this tape. And the brook has returned to a very calm, leisurely flow. In fact, there's no water in the lower part of the brook at all. And except for the uh, evidences of what has happened, uh, as I look out the window, why one would never suppose that such a terrific uh, amount of water had, uh, what shall I say, gone over the dam? <laughs> right through the dam. <laughs> or right through the dam. Anyway, uh, Two weeks has passed, and uh, things are far from returning to normal so far as Southbridge is concerned. Um, this, I suppose, is history, 
But at any rate, Mechanic Street in Southbridge is a shambles. Um, one wouldn't recognize it uh, very easily. The three-deckers and even um, the A6 decker have been moved, have tumbled into each other, and, uh, well, it was just a big pile of debris all over Mechanic Street. Um, buildings along the river have collapsed completely. All the bridges are out. Uh, the Mechanic Street Bridge is out. The um, Westville Bridge is no longer there. It was, I think, the last part of this recording. There was still a bridge in Westville. Well, there isn't one anymore. In fact, Annie and I, with little Bobby, just took a walk down to Westville and looked across where the Westville Bridge used to be. And uh, everything has calmed down, but except that the bridge is uh, now uh, in exactly the wrong position for anyone to try to get across the river. Uh, the AO is in miserable condition with uh, mud and uh, debris inside the buildings. Although a lot of progress has been made, there's still an awful lot that has to be done. The uh, odor is beginning to get a little better down at the AO. Um, it was pretty bad the latter part of last week, but now that uh, the mud has been cleaned out to a certain extent and uh, disinfectant supplied and what have you, why things are beginning to smell a little better. Anyway, there really isn't too much to say about it that uh, isn't a matter of record. Um, what do you think, Annie? Do you have anything to say about the these here now floods? <laughs> Well, I know it's been keeping you awfully busy, the AO. You well, I've had been a working job or two to do there. <clears throat> Not to mention the fact that uh, the day after the flood, or was it two days after the flood, we had to repair Wallace Road in order to get out at all. There was a gorge uh, cut through the road um, about three-tenths of a mile from the house going toward Deary Brothers and uh, all the men in the neighborhood worked together uh, to um, load uh, several trucks, Stan Kabinsky and uh, Dej uh, Golan's trucks with rocks from the stone walls around here and filled in the gorge and then uh, the town uh, dumped gravel there and thus we had a bridge which we could use in order to get in and out of Wallace Road. Outside of, if it hadn't been for that, we were completely cut off due to the fact that the Westville uh, Bridge was out and the River Road Bridge, the second bridge, was also out. And, uh, but that was taken care of, I believe, on Saturday. Uh, Sunday, we didn't do very much of anything, did we? No, but I was going to say that's a pretty good bridge. It's still standing, and the town is sending trucks filled with dirt over it one after another all day long, and the bridge is still okay that two fellows built. Well, I tell you, when we build a bridge, we, we don't fool around, boy. I think it was a cute sign that Larry Boniface put up there. Uh, something to the effect that this bridge was built by the citizens of Westville, uh, visitors are welcome at their own risk. Sign isn't there anymore. I don't know what happened to it. Somebody moved it. But at any rate, uh, the bridge was built. We were able to get in and out. Sunday we stayed home rather quietly. We were unable to communicate with anybody, of course. Uh, there was no telephone service except local service. Uh, in Southbridge, uh, there was no power, no electricity. And um, so we merely vegetated on Sunday. Uh, Monday I went into work and I have been going into work from that Monday until the present, <coughs> which is Wednesday, and uh, so far we haven't had any time off, although we are kind of hoping that this weekend, being the Labor Day weekend, why perhaps we'll get a one or two day rest. Um, 
the Yankee workshop was not uh, destroyed, contrary to early reports, which um, depicted rather a uh, serious state of affairs at the Yankee workshop. It was undermined to some extent, but it has been um, shored up and uh, in fact is open for business and Annie has already worked uh, one afternoon last uh, Sunday um, and um, the place is crawling with customers and they're having big bargains uh, of furniture there. So uh, things are gradually returning to some semblance of normalcy. Um, school is going to start next week, if which is a good sign of things being normal. It says in the paper, if enough roads are open yeah. so well, that the buses can pass. But you forgot to mention that, that uh, your family left you after four days of being without water, electricity, or any conveniences while we took off for Providence. That's right, and uh, spent a few days last week in Providence with Grandma Haynes. Who was very relieved to see us and hear from us well, of course by she, that time. She hadn't been able, she'd been trying to get through to Southbridge and, and it just hadn't been possible to get any kind of a message through either way. And so, so far as she knew why we were busily floating down the Quinnebog River. So uh, she was very glad to hear from us, I guess. Yes, she was. <laughs> And, um, of course, um, <coughs> Dorothy and Arthur Green left here um, Wednesday, was it Wednesday? Thursday night. Thursday, Thursday night on Anne's birthday. Uh, this flood, by the way, was in celebration, I guess. Uh, you see, uh, Annie, I had given Annie a steam flat, and uh, I was told that you mustn't use anything but rainwater in it and so we had a little rain in order to have rainwater to put in the flat. Things just got out of hand, that's all. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, Arthur and Dorothy Green were here, and they drove home in the flood, and uh, they must have uh, ha driven uh, through Putnam, Connecticut, which uh, is something that no one can do today, as the bridges are out in Putnam, and Putnam is in as bad if not worse condition than Southbridge, uh, especially in as much as it's the main section of Putnam which has been damaged. And um, they had terrific fires uh, due to um, uh, magnesium uh, exploding at the magnesium factory there. And uh, so they've had, they've had quite a siege. So anyway, so they went home dur right during the, uh, during the flood itself. And uh, after they got home, of course, they were a little concerned the next morning when they found out what had happened and uh, the conditions that obtained and uh, were a little upset when they weren't able to reach us either. But this is all two weeks ago. Well, Marilyn says she wants to say something. Well... What would Marilyn like to say? Oh, you're in big addition <laughs> to this tape. Well, Bobby, fortunately, is going to bed now. Um, he was a little tired. Otherwise, he would probably have something to say, too. Uh, he... Um, as I say, we just took him for a walk to Westville and back in his stroller, so uh, he really is sleeping peacefully at the moment. Well, that about sums up the experiences of the past couple of weeks, um, and it will probably be considerable length of time before things have returned to normal all the way around, and we can... Uh, peacefully go to work in the morning and come home at night and uh, live according to our usual routine way. Um, oh, you, many, for, you forgot hmm? to mention the typhoid shots. Oh yes, everyone is having typhoid shots, naturally. 
um, it's quite the rage. Although I notice there seems to be a tendency now that everybody's had one shot uh, not to have any more. There's actually a series of three is required um, according to medical people in order to gain immunity. I've had two myself. Uh, the family hasn't had any. The shots haven't bothered you at all either, but most people are complaining bitterly about the effects of the shot. Well, some are anyway. Most people are. <laughs> you know, it's in Pasqua's uh, gym floor was all flooded. So I see in the paper. Well, that's Santasca is, I'm afraid, going to be subject to a lot of that sort of thing. Well, that's about it. Molly is barking. I don't know what's wrong with her. She probably wants to come in the house. Now, what has just happened out there? Nothing. Well, people keep hitting that bump in the road where the, where the huge hole was. That hole that I mentioned tape, um, is now filled in with gravel, but the gravel is, oh, maybe six inches or so lower than the rest of the road. And so it's if you try to go over it at uh, 40 miles an hour, you get quite a surprise. Whoops, somebody just did it. But that didn't bother many. Well, that's the way things are. Right? Right. Right. <laughs> so that's August 31st, the after the flood has gone away, let's hope, for many, many years. This is Dick Whitney again, back in uh, 2012. Uh, you certainly can appreciate the damage that uh, Selfridge received. Last year we had a tornado and had significant damage, although in a, albeit in a smaller area. But uh, Selfridge was really uh, devastated. American Optical and, and the uh, area of the flats was really, as you could tell, quite uh, impacted by this flood, where two dams broke, one West Street and one in uh, Charlton. Anyway, I'd like to thank Bob Haynes, who provided the audio tape to me from a reel-to-reel -reel recording he made in Sturbridge in 1955 off the Weasel broadcast. Uh, also, Don Whitney, uh, my father's slides were used extensively. Emily Faxon, um, Bill Kroll, and uh, a variety of uh, people. Carl Houghton, the Army Car of Engineers, Russell St. Laurent, Alphonse Mamani. I'd also like to thank uh, people who have come forward since that time. Margaret Morrissey was a, a very helpful at the library, Kathy Grenier, Bob McMaster, Kelly Spinelli, and Aaron Moriarty. Should you be interested in seeing more, uh, certainly visit my website or the opticalheritagemuseum.org and feel free to